Pig Vex number one. Filicide, the intentional killing of one's own offspring. Infanticide, the intentional act of killing an infant. Cannibalism, the practice of eating the flesh of one's own species. These scenes are already bad enough by themselves, but as if that was enough, pigs go ahead and wrap them up into one neatly wrapped package of entrails and horror. Where to even begin? I suppose I just start with the fact that mother pigs or cells will sometimes eat their own newly born children. Who do they think they are? Cronus? Now, apparently there's lore behind why pigs eat their newborn piglets. This process is known as savaging, and just by the name itself, you can already tell it's nothing good. The term is used in ethology to refer to aggressive behavior displayed by mothers towards the offspring, which in all fairness can be used to describe all Hispanic mothers with their chanclas or ancient mothers. Anytime you being the little shit that you are, cock up big time and next thing you know a high velocity snipper has slammed into your cranium and rattled your grey matter harder than any left hook Mike Tyson would have dished out. Reminds me of that time I visited a friend's house, where I got to witness first handedly the dead eyed accuracy of mothers when it comes to chucking footwear. But that's beside the point, we're not here to reminisce about my childhood. We're here to talk about something that would be traumatizing if it happened to humans. Anyways, when it comes to pigs, savaging mostly occurs in sows who are first-time mothers. The term for that would be a guilt pig, or in plural form, guilts. The reason is because of nervousness and apprehension, which I doubt any of you would know since A. You're probably not a mother, and B. You're probably not even old enough to be a parent. Anyhow, it's pretty much the human equivalent to aborting a baby because you aren't ready to be a parent yet. Except, you know, way too late. It's like having your toddler smash some glassware and then immediately going for your shotgun. This, however, does not mean that only guilts engage in savaging. Any cell can. Younger pigs are just more prone to doing so due to inexperience. Now, nervousness and apprehension is just one of the reasons. Sometimes it's just because the mother pig isn't receiving enough nutrients to produce enough milk to feed her young. So she decides to cull the litter out of desperation. Or alternatively, they just cull the sickly and weak piglets. You know, because survival of the fittest. So the next time you call someone an ableist pig, just know that it has a double meaning now. Now, let's circle back to the nervousness and apprehension cells feel, and then expand upon that. Other psychological factors can just as easily lead to savaging, like agitation or stress. But you see, the problem is that pigs are really finicky and spoiled creatures, which makes them quite temperamental, meaning that they can start savaging because of some traumatic event or simply because they've been mildly inconvenienced by the farm workers making too much noise, not feeding them on time or if they sense that the workers are stressed, frustrated or angry. Sometimes even the mere presence of a human can annoy them, or are not receiving enough sunlight. That's just how finicky pigs are. And that's only when we're talking about human-pig interactions. We haven't even started discussing how the squeals of the piglets are enough to annoy the mother enough to start a massacre. Annoyance is quite literally all it takes for a motherly massacre to ensue. In short, the mother pig gets too stressed out and decides to go on murderous, filicidal rampage by either stomping them into red paste, brutalizing them with cloven hooves, body slamming them, biting them, or in more extreme cases, outright cannibalizing their own children, which usually results in a mess of mangled body parts strewn about here and there. And there. Oh, and some bits over there too. Along with some bits here under the hay. Usually it's the entire litter that gets completely annihilated, or a large chunk of the litter. But in rare cases, the guilt just has a personal vendetta against one piglet in particular, and ignores all the others in the litter. Then there's the funnier instances where the mother accidentally crushes their piglets on account of being a, uh, you know, fat multi-hundred pounded pig, or just accidentally steps on a piglet in a crowded pen. It's a bit tragic, but the mental imagery is still hilarious. <coughs> what was that? Aw oh, shit, did I just step on Wilbur Jr? That's the fifth one this week.
Sometimes the savaging damage is an irrecoverable, and some piglet survivors can still be saved with some medical care, while others may have to be euthanized because it's the humane option. A gun would probably do the trick too. A gun pretty much solves any and all problems. If it doesn't solve a problem, then you probably just need a bigger gun. Oh, and here's a fun bit of additional information. You've heard of the domino effect, right? Well, occasionally, one act of filicide can lead to a cascade of carnage, where other cells witness the unholy act of murdering one's own offspring and think, Huh, must be the new trend. Time to copy them. And thus begins the pig purge. I'm fairly certain there's a Nicolas Cage movie exactly like this, where adults fly into a homicidal rage towards their own children. I think it was the one where he delivered a slap of God. I don't remember what it's called. Anyways, as one would imagine, constantly having to clean up a slaughter that didn't happen in the slaughterhouse is annoying for farmers and also not profitable for them since those piglets could have been perfectly good bacon later on. They shouldn't have been slaughtered at birth. They should have been slaughtered after years of being fed oats. Thus lies the tragic fates of savaging victims. Too old to be aborted, and too young to become bacon bits. Right, as I was saying, it's annoying for farmers. So obviously they've developed strategic countermeasures to prevent savaging to some degree. Let's start with the two polar opposite methods. The first of which would be giving the guilds plenty of space so they don't get stressed out and go ham on their litter. Or to prevent accidental squishinings. Dazer method involves knocking the guilt in the cage with gaps large enough for piglets to fall out of and escape from while the farrowing is happening. Personally, I'd say the caging method is more effective since the risk is minimized. Now, another method would be supervising the farrowing yourself and immediately picking up the piglets and dropping them into a box for their own protection. There's a bunch of other methods I found that can be used to prevent savaging. I can't say how effective they are. Because I'm just some bum sitting in my room eating bacon bits. I'm no farmer, and chances are neither are you, so this is useless information to you. Anyways, the most obvious approach would be to call cells that are repeat offenders and have savaged multiple litters. Chances are they'll just savage another litter based on their history, so getting rid of them is the most effective approach. Or in other words, call the callers. You can also crate the guilts a few days before farrowing actually begins. Three days or more should be good. The annoying methods include handling guilts with sympathy, like making sure you're quiet around farrowing houses, switching out your feed for some brawn before farrowing might also help, since it's high fiber which is supposedly able to induce calmness and lower stress in pigs. I think it applies to animals in general. Which would explain why old people like brawn so much. Avoiding cross-fostering is also believed to help. Which if you don't know, cross-fostering is just taking a piglet and dumping it onto a sow that isn't its birth mother. Which again, need I remind you that first-time mothers cannot cope with children. Cross-fostering is essentially the human equivalent of being a nurse and engaging in some tomfoolery by swapping babies in the maternity ward and watching as chaos ensues. Actually, avoiding cross-fostering in general should probably be practiced, since you're pretty much forcing an adoption, which would probably result in, you're not my child, die pretender. Anyways, sensory deprivation could maybe also work, specifically temporarily depriving them of your sight and hearing to lessen the effects. I don't know how pigs respond to two senses being sealed off. But I do know that reducing lighting levels is usually good enough to count as cutting off your line of sight without resorting to complete deprivation. Speaking of deprivation, muzzling the pigs should help. Or hog tying the hogs. Restricting your movements just like the cage. Also, I forgot to mention, but these methods probably don't work. Apart from the muzzling. And I think they also go against some regulations or something. Again, not a farmer. So you probably shouldn't deprive them of their senses. I could just delete this part, but nah. Managing the weight of guilt can also help as being overweight can lead to complications in farrowing. Which might be difficult because... Pigs. Need I say more? Also, timing matters. 
such as when you relocate the cell to the farrowing houses. Too late and they don't adjust to the environment. Too soon and sores from lying down may appear. Diseases could also fester. Some farmers believe music can help, which would seem counterintuitive since loud noises and stuff. I would assume calming music should do the trick. If you're a farmer, you can probably experiment a bit. Maybe put on some deathcore and see what happens. But it's probably more so just a case of perceived bias, where the mood of the caretaker improves and as a result, everything seems fine and dandy to them. You could also put small animals like her rabbits or something inside a pen a couple of hours before the farrowing begins. Anything above 4 hours should work. By doing this, you should be able to get the guilds accustomed to small animals running around them. Of course, there's a good chance that the small animals you put inside the pen will annoy them and as a result get savage too. But that's just a minor issue. Now, as for the more straightforward methods. Drugs. And by drugs, I mean either using sedation on guilds showing signs of savaging or after they have finished farrowing. Specifically, guilds showing signs of aggression. Personally, I just drank all of them with my lack of ethical conduct, or even just gas them. Or you could just feed them painkillers because giving birth is painful, and pain equals stress, which equals annoyance for everyone involved. I don't know what type of medication specifically you should feed them. There's like a few different types of painkillers. You should figure that out yourself. Now, there have been attempts to find a genetic cause for savaging but those efforts were to no avail. The only thing that was found was that certain breeds or buying from certain breeding companies led to an increased risk for savaging, which if I were to guess is probably due to a contrast effect, where either the environment prior to purchasing was stressful enough for the sow to become accustomed to higher levels of stress, or because the previous environment was too comfy, making the sow more prone to stress. But... Jesus Christ, Mother Nature is messed up. I don't think there's much else to talk about.